My name is Graham Abbott, I'm the General Manager of the Hanwell Springs Thermal Pools and Spa. I've been lucky enough to be in this role for 21 years and it's been a privilege to run this place actually. We've got 130 staff here at peak time and during the quieter months we've got around about 80 staff. So we host 540,000 people a year through this complex and the business has continued to grow over the last uh, 15 years or so. Yeah, the last 12 months have been an absolute roller coaster. If you run back a little bit earlier than that, you know, 15 months ago we're in the depths of COVID saying, what does the future look like? And to be honest, we had no idea. Um, trying to figure out whether people would be happy to sit next to each other bathing um, was a really big question for us. Thankfully for us, we've had a really, really good time since COVID um, has, has been as part of the country. The locals in New Zealand, in Christchurch in the first instance, came back to us the days that we opened albeit those in level two restrictions. Since that time, New Zealanders from all around the country have come back in droves. In fact, our January was the biggest month that we've ever had in the complex. So the last 12 months for us have been interesting, lots of challenges, lots of uh, people with concerns in terms of staff being on edge. So it's been a challenging time, but it's been a very positive time for us in terms of welcoming you know, record numbers back into the complex and, and our profitability has been very good as well. We've seen quite a diversity of different ethnicities come in larger numbers as people from around the country have travelled and, and come into Hanmer Springs. Christchurch, as you know, is very much a, a multicultural city, and, but we're seeing more and more of those groups coming in into the pools. We have, 10 years ago, if you said that we have a lot of different ethnic groups coming into the pools, the answer would have been not really. Um, these days we're seeing um, large numbers of Muslim people coming to the pools. So people bathing in, in, in full bathing suits is now is not something that's a surprise to us. Ten years ago it would have been, oh look there's a group. Um, this day and age we, we're getting used to that. Other groups like Filipino groups who are coming from the local farming area, um, they come to the complex as, as a group, as a, as, as a family, or an extended family actually, and they will bring their food and they will share that food and they will set up camp as a group within, within themselves. Would that have happened 10 years ago? I doubt very much, but certainly it's happening these days. So we expect that when the board is open and we're able to have, have people come and visit us, that those types of experiences and, and, and groups of people coming from, from China and, and, and Southeast Asia as, as a whole, over time will come back to us. And we need to understand how we can manage their needs and their wants a whole lot better than perhaps we have at the, in the past. So the last year in particular has been really good for us from learning more about those different ethnic groups. So how we manage those groups is, is interesting. So we will spend a lot of time training, we, we spend a lot of time training now, um, our staff, as to how to deal with those different groups because even within different cultures there are different levels of communication and different levels of expectations that those groups need. So it's important for us to get a better understanding of the markets and get, get a better understanding of how people view us as well. The, that is something that we do with training and, and that we will enlist experts to come and help us with that because it's expertise that we don't have that we need to be better at. So it's not just our customers that are multicultural, we, our staff has evolved over time to be very multicultural. Um, when we don't have border restrictions, over a third of our staff uh, come from outside of New Zealand. Um, but right now, all of our staff clearly are, are Kiwis. Uh, but the interesting part about that is that they are Kiwis from all sorts of nation, different nationalities originally. Interestingly, over the last five years, we've had a number of Muslim staff here. And that's been interesting, uh, mainly from the point of view of us not being aware of their culture. Um, for example, last year, we had one of our staff um, a lifeguard who, who was Muslim and, and she wore a burqa. In the first instance that was a bit strange for us um, because we're very regimented about um, how we present our staff and wearing our caps and all of our branded things. But again, no problem. It was just a matter of adapting our protocols and saying this is out of respect to somebody else's nationality. So it's just a matter of moving with the times and, and, and moving with the change of our, um, our, our culture and, and the breakdown of the different cultures that happen in, in the New Zealand society. Another practice we've implemented is, is how we deal with our, our signage around the complex because we host pre-lockdown a, a, a lot of nations and a lot of countries who have different languages and so what we've gone to is using symbols rather than words. We'll still have all the words in English because we, we had trouble saying which countries should we, should we recognise in terms of their languages 
and it seemed as though that we were going to be quite exclusive and exclusive to, to some nations if we were going about doing that. So all of our signage around the complex has, has symbols which are easy to recognise and we believe are, are non-offensive to anybody. So, and it works for us. So what does the future hold? Uh, the million dollar question, actually the multi-million dollar question as to what the future looks like. We're tending to deal with this in, in, in two parts. We know that the immediate future looks like a whole lot of New Zealanders come back and visiting us in the next 12 months or so. But we're also getting ourselves ready for when the borders do open. And we know that markets like the South American market will come back at some stage. And we're looking forward to that in two parts. We've had a number of South Americans work for us over the years. So we're keen that that market opens up and the backpackers come back and, and, and we have some staff from there as well. But we also see, we're hearing from the research from Tourism New Zealand that the Asian market is going to come back and that they will be looking at coming as families and we, we look forward to having them back again. So those markets, we think, who knows what the time frame is, but part of our training is for us to get ready for that, for us to have everything um, focused and, and, and online so that as soon as that market is ready to come back, we're ready to host them because previously they were 20% of our business and we're looking forward to having them back again whilst retaining um, the New Zealand market has been pretty loyal to us as well.